So we can do something like this that's fully responsive in every direction. So if, I'm going to let this play first, and then I'll show you. So if I replay that, I can actually make this animation any size I want, and it's going to stay completely stable and consistent. Pretty cool. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be completely fluid, right? Like our, our, uh, our UIs are not just like mushing back and forth like that. So let's implement some actual responsive design. So when I was making this one, which is a Huggy Laser Panda Factory, um, I'm actually designing it to be like Legos. So they're interlocking bits. So if you see this first part, this blue is up here. This is actually just transformed to be backwards and then it fit into this shape here. So it's like interlocking into this part and this part is here. Um, one thing I did worry, like, kind of think about, and if you're working with a different designer than yourself, I'm actually like the designer and the dev for this, but if you're working with someone, one thing that's nice about this is I'm scoping my design with the same scope as my functions. So all of the interaction that happens here is also defined in a function that's that timeline. So I keep everything nice and consistent and neat and organized, and I know right where to go when I'm trying to manipulate it later or change timing. So if we look at this pen, so we've got this like responsive huggy laser panda factory. So he get, becomes like lasered. And then here he's like going to become a panda. And then here he becomes huggy, you know, as you do. And then, and then you know, as I move it in, it just like completely reconfigures and it still functions great on mobile. So yeah, like I said, I'm just really wrapping that timeline in a function here, and then I'm pausing it initially so that I can call it later. It's really very simple.